Okay, so let's move along by adding in our registration page. So pages, file new, register, dot view. Then I'm just gonna run through the basic template structure real quick here just to get us set up and going. Okay, so here's the high level overview of our page. We're gonna have our H1, we're gonna have two different forms, one for register, one for our confirm registration, and then we're also going to have an authenticated view. So first and foremost, let's go ahead and set up our form. So we're gonna have two steps to our form. So let's go ahead and define those steps. So const steps, we'll have register as register, and confirm as confirm. Then let's go ahead and define those in our state. So steps is, and let's just spread it, steps to create a copy. We'll set our default step to steps.register. Then we're gonna have two forms, one called register form, and that's gonna have an email set to an empty string and a password set to an empty string. And then we're gonna have confirm form with email set to an empty string and pass oh, code, sorry, code set to an empty string. Now that we have that set up, let's go ahead and set up our two forms. So this one will be shown v if step equals steps.register. And then we'll do an action for this as submit, and then we'll prevent default, and we'll call this register. And then we're gonna have two inputs and a button. So input v model will be register form dot email. Type for this is gonna be email We'll put a placeholder on it just so we can tell what it is. And we'll set a class on it just so we can determine where the boundaries of it are. Yeah. All right, and then we'll have another input, the model register form dot password. Type for this will be password. Placeholder for this will be password. And the class for this will be password form control. Sorry, form control. All right, and then our button will be type submit. And then we'll just reuse one of the default uh, Nux classes here as button hyphen hyphen green. And the text for that will be register. Let's just copy that form and paste it into the confirm form. And this confirm form is going to be shown v else since we only have two different steps. And we'll do a submit prevent default on that as well as confirm. We need to change the register form to confirm form. And then password needs to change to code. Nope, not type code, sorry. Placeholder, code, there we go. And then register changes to confirm. Okay, great, we have those two set up. Now we need to set up our actions. So register and confirm methods here. So let's go down to the end of our data, add in methods, async register. Go ahead and wrap this one in a try catch. And we'll just console.log out any errors should we get any. And let's await this dot store dot dispatch auth register. And let's pass it our register form. All right. And then we want to just copy over the email. Um, there's probably cleaner, easier ways to do this, but just for brevity's sake and ease of understanding, let's just go ahead and do that. And then this dot steps needs to be changed to confirm. So our current step will be changed to confirm and we'll copy over the email after the user is successfully registered. All right, next up, let's add in confirm. So confirm, wrap this one on track catch as well. And we'll do the same, console.logout, any errors, should we get them? And we will await this.store.dispatch off confirm registration. And I always gonna make sure you spell it out right. And we'll pass it to confirm form. And then remember that neither the register nor confirm registration steps going to automatically log us in. So we need to manually call login ourselves. So await this store dispatch off login this dot. And we can just pass it a register form since it has the fields necessary for that. All right, and after we've successfully registered, we've confirmed our registration and we've automatically logged in our user. Let's go ahead and kick them back to the index page. All right, very good. So at this point, we should be ready to go ahead and test out our registration page. So let's jump back into our terminal. npm run dev, pop it open in the browser. Let's head over to the register page. All right, we have an email and a password. Forgot to style the class. Let's jump back real quick. Let's just do that in the layout. So dot form control 
And we'll use some Tailwind magic here. So add apply, padding X of three, padding Y of two. We'll add a border and we'll color that border gray 200. And then we'll add a, mod then we'll add a margin bottom of three. Set this to display block as well. All right, jump back into the browser at this point. All right, good enough. We can see where the inputs are. So let's go ahead and open up our console real quick just so we can see the events actually kick off. And then real quick before we actually register a user, let's remember that we're gonna to have to enter in a confirmation code in the second step of our confirmation flow. So this email that we input here is actually going to have to be a valid email. So just keep that in mind going forward. And enter in my personal email here, enter in some password, hit register. All right, and we can see a post got fired off here with a 200 response. And it sounds like my email just came in and we are on the confirmation code step. So let's go ahead and dive into the email and get that code. All right, so here's my code. I'm gonna go ahead and just copy and paste this into the code field and let's hit confirm. And oh no, confirmation code cannot be empty. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what might have caused that. Ah, confirm form password field. That needs to be changed to code. Let's go ahead and give that a save and let's retry. So let's paste the code in and confirm. And there we go. Now we see a bunch of requests get kicked off and we are redirected back to the index page. So at this point, we're safe to assume that we're logged in. However, we can verify that by heading into the Vuex store, DevTools, load our state in, and we can see is authenticated is true. We have a user object, and we have a bunch of data for our user, including some JWT data. We can see here in our attributes, email is the email I inputted. Our email is now verified. So at this point, our user is registered, their email is confirmed, and they're successfully logged into our application. Additionally, we can head back into our user pool over on the Amazon console, give the table a refresh here. And we can see our users right here. We can actually dive into that user. And it's within here that we can manage our user and see their details as well. So let's jump back into our application, give the page a refresh, give our store a refresh, and we can see that we're actually logged out. So next up, let's go ahead and go over how to set up authentication persisting so that our user's session isn't canceled every time that they refresh the page. Jump back into the code. The way that I like to do this is via plugin. So let's go ahead and create a new plugin called auth.js. Let's import view from view, export default async. Let's extract out our store, await store.dispatch auth. And it's here that we wanna use that load method. So if there is one, this will load in the currently authenticated user for the session. While we're here, there's also a personal preference thing that I like to do to make things nice, easy, and accessible. I'm gonna go ahead and create an auth service with a constructor that takes in the store and I'm gonna save that store to the service. And then I'll create a couple of getters. So is authenticated return this dot store state auth is authenticated get user return this store state auth user and then get email if not user, then just return. Otherwise, let's return this user attributes email. And then let's go ahead and create a new auth service instance. So const auth service equals new auth service. And let's pass it in the store. And then let's attach it to view. So we'll attach it to the prototype. And we'll also attach it to view itself. So since we quite frequently tend to reach for authentication properties throughout an application, I like to put some of the more popular authentication properties within this auth service here. That way they're readily and easily accessible throughout the entire application. So for instance, let's go ahead and set up our home page to tell us whether or not our user is currently logged in. So let's jump back to the index page and let's get rid of everything but the logo and the H1. Let's go ahead and set up an unauthenticated view. And then we'll also set up an authenticated view. So here we'll do div v if, and then we can reach straight for our auth class, auth dot is authenticated. And we'll just add in a Nux link to log in. We'll use one of the Nux default classes. Button gray, log in, do another Nux link to register okay 
And then for unauthenticated view, then we just do div v else. Then we can reach straight for the auth class again. If I can spell it right, auth.email. And then here we can add a button. Once it's clicked, we'll log our user out. So store dispatch auth log out. And let's add a class on that guy too. I think these grays are spelled with E's. All right, let's give that a save. And then before we reload the page, we need to go register that auth plugin that we created. So let's go into our Nux config. Right behind the Amplify plugin, let's just add in our auth plugin. So tilde plugins auth. This one can run on either server or client, but since we are running client only, it doesn't really matter. All right, jump back into our browser. Might have an error there. Give the page a refresh. There we go. You're currently logged in as, and then your email. So that seems to have automatically picked up my user session. We can go down into VOX store, refresh it to verify is authenticated true. We have some user data. Give it another refresh. And there we go. Seems to be the same thing. Very cool. So we are now persisting our authentication state. We are now displaying to the user whether or not our user is logged in and we offer a logout functionality. So last but not least, we need to provide our user a way to log back in. So let's add in another page. Let's call this login. Again, I'm just gonna run through the structure of this really quick. Okay, so again, here's the high level overview of our page structure. Let's go ahead and start out by adding in our state. So all we're gonna need for this is a single form with an email and a password. All right, let's go ahead and add in our inputs. So we'll have input, v model, form, email, type, email, placeholder, email, class, form control. And another input, v model, form, password, type, password, placeholder, password. If I can get there. I can get there, class, form control. All right, and then a button, type submit, class button green, and log in. All right, while we're here, we can actually go ahead and add in our authenticated view and our unauthenticated view. So v if not auth is authenticated, and then down here we'll do v else, you're logged in as auth.email. And we can give them a logout functionality here. So at click equals store dispatch auth logout class button green logout. All right, give that a save. Last but not least, let's add in our submit. So submit prevent login. And we need our method for that. Methods, async, login, sorry, try catch. Let's console log out of error if we should get one. And let's await this store dispatch auth login, pass it the form, so this form. And then on successful login, let's redirect them back to the index page. Okay, cool. So let's jump back into the browser and give that a good test. So log in, email, fall of Mars, provided the password, and let's log in. Forgot to go to the console, but nevertheless, we can see there's our post requests. We got redirected back to the index page. We have our currently logged in user. So all seems to be working pretty well. So we can log out. We can run back through the registration flow. So we'll just do Mars and a good tip is if you have a Gmail account, you can actually add in a plus one and it will send to the email as though there is not that plus one there. Just a good way to get past unique constraints on emails. Go ahead and hit register. Got that confirmed form back here. Should get an email kicked off here. There it is. Email verification code. Give that a copy. Give that a paste. Confirm. Should get redirected back to the index page. There we go. All right, we have that. 
Let's log out. Let's log in. Sorry, plus one. And come we go. Log in. And we're logged in. And I did notice one thing on the registration page. We did not go through and add in the authentication states on that. So let's go do that really quick before we call this all said and done. Register the if not auth is authenticated. And then we need the v else down here. So v else. And let's just copy and paste what we have on the login page here. So right there, give that a copy and then a paste, give that a save, turn back to the browser, and there we go, that's gone. So at this point, if we go log in, all right, head back to the register page, you're logged in as follow up Marson in the lockout. All right, cool. So we are all rigged up. We have our authentication working. Our users can register. They can confirm their email. They can log in. We have persisting state on refresh. I do apologize for the length of the video, but we have a completed and working authentication system right here. Thanks for watching.